Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Sunday. Sunday morning here. Hope everyone remembered to uh, set their clocks back an hour. 10.57 a.m. here, California time. Uh, November 3rd, 2024 is the date. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a uh, 3.7 here across the area of the uh, Middle America Trench, the southern end, it looks like, right there in the red flag. Also 2.5 coming in across the area of the Greece region, where uh, a little bit of movement is happening there today with a five-pointer stirring up out here outside of Greece. 5.3 to be exact out in the Aegean Sea region. Uh, also some further aftershock activity there showing up on the Earthquake 3D globe. Quite a little, quite a little swarm going on there today. Of course, uh, over the last 24, 36 hours or so, we've had a number of earthquakes up here across the Iceland area. Uh, north and south in the uh, divergent zones. Now, this is oceanic rift zones. When this happens out here, normally we put the strain out here across this area. Uh, almost always follows activity out here when we see elevated movement. So that's uh, an obvious sign there that we could uh, continue to see some further pressurization out here across the Mediterranean region where the uh, 5.3 struck this morning. It looks like some fours in there as well. Overall amplified conditions out here today in this area of the world. Uh, let's see what we got here for the states. A little earthquake coming in into the Stanton, Texas area. I already know what's out here outside of Midland. Out in the Permian Basin region. Big spring area. Lots and lots of oil fields out here. Goodness. As we zoom in, we'll double check this. As you can see, a lot of wastewater disposal ponds. Those are not uh, agricultural farming ponds those are uh, uh, wastewater ponds don't want to don't want to drink that stuff out there that's for sure um, quite a few oil pads out there as you can see literally you can't walk five feet without running into a new oil pad out there so a lot going on out there recently a lot of earthquakes out there as well the latest a 3.0 four miles deep there for that earthquake uh, the new Madrid seismic zone of course shaking things up out there last night with a 3.7 earthquake looks like a couple minutes later a 2.1 coming into the same area gotta watch this here it's been over uh, 200 years since we've seen a large-scale adjustment out here and uh, back in 1811 1812 they've seen a series of large 7.0 earthquakes 7.5 uh, to be exact so uh, it can happen definitely uh, is building up some strain there these little earthquake uh, events let us know that things are Still very much alive there across that fault system. Uh, for California, let's see if we got anything major going on here today. Uh, nothing above 2.5. Looks like most of the activity here generally in the microquake range and very minimal at best here. We got a little bit of movement here across the Fullerton area outside of Anaheim, but these are very small microquakes. A lot from yesterday, some of them from today. Uh, but overall, it doesn't look like we've seen any migrational activity up here from last night's movement down south here in the Baja, California area. But as always, we continue to keep an eye there on Southern California as they have they have been uh, relatively active here in the last, oh, two to three months. Elevated seismic activity has been noted across the majority of Southern California. So I don't think it's the end of it. Uh, just little quiet periods and then it kicks up again. Uh, let's see, Northern California, Bay Area, Bay Area, pretty quiet. One earthquake here outside of the Eureka area. Now, this is going to be associated here with, uh, well, it's about 12 miles deep, so associated with the Cascadia subduction zone for a 3.6. I'm sure a few folks reported film that earthquake out here around Fortuna, Eureka area. Not a big earthquake, but... Uh, that's a, any, you know, anything above three, definitely got to take notice of and, and watch exactly where the location is. And this has everything to do with the uh, southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. But that's the only quake shown up there for now. Oregon and Washington, pretty quiet. Yellowstone National Park, nothing shown up there. Uh, let's see what else we got for worldwide activity. 5.1 off the coast of Nicaragua from yesterday. Now, this is the area that's seen a little bit of movement here across the area. That almost looks like it's around Costa Rica area uh, with a 3.7 and a couple other earthquakes down here along the southern end here of this plate boundary. A 
couple more quakes around the Puerto Rico area, it looks like. Handful of them. Some twos out there. Nothing major going on there for now. All right, as far as worldwide activity goes, let's go ahead and take a look. Let's get rid of some of this because I, I remembered I brought back a couple days of uh, seismic events there on the globe to show you guys the activity out here in the Atlantic, northern Atlantic area. I'm putting the strain out here across this region of the uh, Mediterranean where it's fairly active. Uh, some older quick activity there around the Ethiopia area. This region has been uh, experiencing... Uh, some rift movement out here around a specific volcano. Uh, occasionally we'll be seeing uh, some swarming out there. The last one uh, yesterday, and there's a lot more earthquake activity happening than what's shown on the USGS side of things across this rift valley. Separation, continental rift. Uh, of course, you get volcanoes up and down the board when that happens. There's quite a few volcanoes out here. And this earthquake activity happening uh, within the vicinity of one of these volcanoes but more towards the uh, northeastern area of that rift boundary. So that's obviously an area to watch. Um, and uh, yeah, nothing major going on there for now, but obviously any type of elevated movement can stir things up on the volcano side of things. Uh, 5.3, that is from this morning there in Greece. Let's see what else we got. Indian Ocean, pretty quiet. Got some movement here across... The Java Trench and uh, typical zones out here. I guess we got a little bit further newer movement here across the Izu Trench. Fairly shallow earthquake activity, but that's a pretty decent swarm of activity right here happening around the Volcano Islands area. A bunch of fours. Quite a few fours out here. Even a 5.2 there in the mix as well across this area. Again, very shallow earthquake movement. We'll definitely watch that. Normally what takes place here across this area of the plate boundary has an adverse effect over here across this region. And, of course, that includes that subduction zone right here off the coast of Japan. Uh, so we'll definitely watch that and see uh, how that plays out today. Super deep earthquake here into the southern end of the Sea of Osk for a 4.4 late last night. 250 miles deep here into that subduction zone. Goodness. Still watching the Coral Cam Chatka. Really no big earthquake activity on it yet, but it's, uh, I feel it's fairly well primed, this little area right here. Shouldn't say little, it's a fairly lengthy subduction zone and capable of producing some big mega quakes. Uh, into the Aleutian Trench here of Alaska, 5.8 earthquakes, shaking things up out here this morning. Uh, following that earthquake, a little aftershock with a 4.1. Been fairly active over here across the Aleutian Trench recently on a broad scale uh, type of event, except for over here across this area of the plate boundary. Still expecting this to fill in uh, eventually, maybe with some larger scale activity. A little small earthquake here from yesterday, 3.4. Uh, the Big Island of Hawaii are just offshore, dealing with some movement across that seamount. Looks like uh, 3.0, the latest quake here a couple hours ago here into the Loihi Seamount. Uh, where we've watched a uh, pretty decent earthquake swarm here stir up in the last couple days. Coming up on about 51 earthquakes of various magnitudes, uh, including some fours. We did have uh, quite a few fours in there. Uh, looks like uh, three of them. Uh, so it's one of those things here where uh, this could turn into some big event in terms of maybe an eruption out here, or we could just see an earthquake swarm and die away. But uh, the latest informational statement there from the usgs volcano site states that this is likely due to magma uh, underneath the area moving around so what we'll watch that pretty closely here uh let's see anything else spectacular going on around the globe here new zealand not a whole lot bumping down there just a couple threes it looks like some deeper activity once again into the tonga trench it's going to be this super deep Five-pointer this morning, 356 uh, miles deep there for that quake. That's a uh, deep one. Space weather activity here. See what's going on on the sun. We still have an elevated threat here, 35% chance for X-flare. Now, it's just kind of sitting there looking pretty, but a couple of these sunspot areas harbor the energy and capability of producing X-flare activity. Uh, this being one of them, although... 
I mean, it's holding steady in terms of complexity, but um, that's about it. There's really no advancement or growth within this sunspot area. Same for this one. Uh, this one popped up out of the blue and produced an M flare here recently. Or, or a C flare, I think. Upper C flare. Uh, but it's getting a little distinct core separation there, which is going to show uh, some decay with that sunspot area. Massive area around the southwestern quadrant of the sun that's going to be scooting further out and about. And uh, a couple newer regions out here on the eastern limb as well. Look at this area. Uh, quite dynamic. A lot of intense colors here in close proximity within that sunspot core. That's going to be 3883. I think we're going to have to watch that area as it's shown some rapid growth. Also a couple other areas behind that as we venture into... This coming week, this could be an area of concern here in terms of stronger flare potential in the days ahead. Again, 35% chance there for X flare probability. Nothing major going on there for the auroras for now. Let's see if uh, that doesn't change here with these sunspot areas coming into view. And as you can see on the UV filter here, this area definitely showing uh, some instability there and crackling of some sea flare, background sea flare activity. So we'll definitely watch that. Uh, goodness, uh, Oklahoma last night uh, seen some tornado activity across the region of the OKC region. Here's uh, some unfiltered preliminary tornado reports that blew through the area last night around Newcastle. Uh, got some damage reported there uh, from that tornado there in Newcastle last night. Uh, all this is subject to, um, you know, review in terms of the... the um, National Weather Service out there doing surveys on this. Uh, eventually, once they get everything reviewed, then they'll put out the preliminary or the uh, the strength of these tornadoes. Uh, but there was one also there in Valley Brook area and outside of the uh, region up here. Hera Tornado, Choctaw region, off of 62, it looks like. Got uh, some tornado activity there with some damage. So, uh, you know, it's unfortunately, it's that time of year. A lot of wind reports out there as well. And, uh, un, you know, these guys are going to have to deal with some more severe weather here over the next couple of days. I've been talking about this, how a low pressure here across the Colorado area is just tapping into a bunch of moisture here, stirring up these storms across Oklahoma and Texas. This is more or less what you would see here in a typical springtime setup. Uh, but we're in November. And, of course, November can be pretty much like spring in terms of potential weather setups. The jet stream dipping down low, cold, drier air, warm, moist air here across this area. And you get those dynamics here for some uh, severe weather threats. Another day of tornado potential out here today, folks. That does include the OKC area down here across Ardmore and even uh, venturing into the Texas area. This whole area, though, even in the green, needs to be on guard there for some tornado activity here today. Um, so just be be alert, folks. Some wind and uh, looks like some hatched hail area down there as well. Those hatched areas can see some super large hail. We're talking about 10% uh, or greater probability of 2-inch diameter hail or larger within 25 miles of a point there in that dash zone. So Lawton, uh, Wichita Falls, Texas area. Abilene, got some uh, big-time severe weather. And that's today, all right? For tomorrow, as we start the work week off, severe weather in the same area. And that's due to that low-pressure system parked right over in this region, just uh, continuing to provide severe weather potential out here across that area. And these guys were dealing with a drought here prior to all the severe weather, but I'm pretty certain they're going to be out of the drought conditions now. A lot of rainfall has, has uh, been been uh, falling with these associated storms tomorrow got a 10 percent hatched area that can include some very large tornadoes up to an ef5 tornado within 25 miles of a point 10 percent or greater probability in that hatch zone uh greenville denison area uh oklahoma i mean that might include ardmore as well it looks like maybe just outside that zone but uh yeah uh, next couple days is going to be pretty crazy here. Let me show you guys on the GFS model. Here's today's model. We put this into motion. You can see that low pressure just 
eventually getting scooted out of the way and squashed. But uh, what is this, like day number three of severe weather? And then we got tomorrow. So, you know, like technically like five days of severe weather potential. And then even to, as we head towards next weekend here, we got another setup, another pattern with potential hurricane activity down here in the Gulf of Mexico. Now, it doesn't look like it's going to be anything organized or well-defined, but there's going to be moisture spinning around here. And if this low taps into the remaining moisture from this tropical system, we could talk about even heavier rainfall amounts out there across Oklahoma and uh, the Midwest out here. So these guys are uh, a little on the dry, dry side uh, recently, but that's coming to an end here. Any drought conditions that were out here is going to be uh, long gone. A series of storm systems there coming down from the Pacific Northwest, it looks like, as we head towards uh, the 11th time period of November. Colder system bringing some snow up there in the mountains. And uh, I don't see any major storms for the West Coast, just some cold storms. With some snow in the mountains, rain in the valley a little bit, but uh, we'll take it. As long as we keep that storm door somewhat op open out here across California, I'm happy. All right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, we're just starting in the winter, right? November. We still got December, January, and February. Some brutal months when it comes to cold systems and whatnot. Uh, so we'll see how this winter plays out, but... Uh, uh, it's definitely interesting here with that severe weather popping off there in the Oklahoma area. A couple smaller spikes there on Petrolia. Um, that's going to be this area where the three-pointer struck here this morning. I'm still dealing with this sickness, folks. It's like day number eight. By the way, how was... Uh, no, that's going away. The proton event's going away magically after we discussed it a little bit. Quite a few other channels picking up on that unusually strong proton event here over the past seven eight days has now completely disappeared suspiciously that's a little odd all right anything major going on in terms of uh, uh let's see where'd my uh asteroids here we go haven't checked this out in a little while i like to look at this map here on occasion Close approach asteroids. It looks like today we have a bus size asteroid, 27 feet here, coming within about 259,000 miles of the planet. That's close, but not uh, super close there. Really not going to be jumping into the orbital viewer unless I see something come within about 15 to 20,000 miles of the Earth. Then we'll get uh, we'll get the information out there. But this is a fairly safe distance here with all these asteroids. Yikes. 290 foot building size asteroid there but a hey, over 4 million miles away for the closest approach so we're getting safe on that one all right folks i'm gonna jump out of here I'm starting to lose my voice again i'm gonna i gotta try something different here because all these home remedies are not working uh, i think i'm gonna head over to the store here and get some of these uh shower uh vapor steam release tablets I don't know if it's Vix or who it is, but they uh, you open it up in the shower and the steam and that medicine, uh, you breathe it into your lungs there as you're taking a shower and it's supposed to help loosen all the mucus and whatnot uh, that, uh, that may be in one's system in the lungs uh, because it sounds like it's getting deeper here in my when I really cough. I don't want to do it on the microphone, but I can feel it lower in my lungs here and I got to do something about it before it gets out of hand i've been dealing with this for about seven days now and it's just odd i don't get sick i don't get sick but all of a sudden you know and here i am not good so i'm gonna take care of that today hopefully i'm gonna try and get this out of my system one way or the other it's coming out all right folks um have a good day mount st helens here looks like it got a little it's got a little spike here of an earthquake showing up on it Nothing big, but uh, we'll see what happens today. Enjoy the rest of your weekend here. I'll catch you guys back out here for the Sunday night update. Stay safe out there.